Hi everyone. We are going to get started with a new project today. It is, and I'm bringing it over so you can see. Well, I'll bring the paper over. Passages from Blue Fern Studios. And you will have seen the walkthrough, so you know what we're doing. Um, this is my second, well, not my second project, but the second collection I'm working with, because we did two with Lucky Star. If you missed those, just check my playlists. And now we're going to do passages. And this is a design project for Scrap and Create. And you can get all of your supplies there. I have got one of the 8x8s, two of the 12x12s. I have the ephemera and I have the journal cards. But I'm going to set these aside for now because we're going to make our page bases today. And then next time on that. Okay. And I've got everything cut out. Hopefully I will get this done expeditiously. So you saw the um, the walkthrough. So you know that all of the odd numbered pages have um, flaps that will open like this. And then there's different things inside each one. And then the even pages have different things. All right, so let me pull out. This is all page. Page one has a ton of stuff. Okay, and that page two just has a little belly band. Okay, our bases, there's a cutting guide. You can go ahead and um, get that down below and make your page bases. If you need help on how to make page bases, I have a video and I will link it. Um, but they are seven and a half by five and a half. Um, so you'll see in the cutting guide, you need four. So you need four pieces, seven and a half by five and a half and four eight and a half by five and a half. And then make your bases. And I am using black cardstock. You can use any color you want. Um, but um, I don't usually work with black, but I thought maybe I'd do it this time. Okay, I did try to mark everything in white pen. It made a bit of a mess, but it'll all be covered by the mats. So for the flaps, um, you need two that are seven and a half by four and three quarters. Okay, and then we have I have so much stuff here. Okay, hang on. All right, that. Which piece is this? Oh, this is the big flap. Okay, so what we're going to have here about is, okay, so we're going to have the, the flaps that open, okay, and then we're going to have this large piece that is also a flap, okay, and that is going to open this way, that's going to reveal this piece, which opens this way. And then this piece is going to have a pocket on it, I think, here. I'm sure it is. I don't know why I said I think. I know it is. Because I thought for a second about putting it here. And I might still. Somewhere in this vicinity, there's going to be a pocket. Okay. So there's a lot going on here. And all of the measurements are in your cutting guide. And this one, I don't know why I didn't score and tape this one, so let me do that first. And... Let's do that. So we have our base, okay, and this flap is the six by seven and a half, and it's scored down one long edge at the half inch. So let's start there. Okay, what I need to do today. Before I forget his order magnets, because I feel like with all these flaps, we're going to be using a lot of magnets in this album. Okay. 
And this is just going to go along one side of your base page. Sorry, I picked it up so that I can see it. So I've just lined up one corner, line up the other corner. And go. Okay. That's good. All right. So this is an opening. This is an opening. Okay. And then these two flaps are going to go on top of this flap. And I think I'm going to go ahead, well, do I want to put magnets yet? No, because I don't know, I don't know what combination of magnets this is going to take. Okay, so we have two flaps, seven and a half by four and three quarters. And they are again scored down one long side. Again, we are just lining up our corners. Like that. Okay, and then this one is going to go on this side. And this one we're kind of cheating a little bit because these big pieces, or uh, not the big pieces, but these uh, overlapping flaps aren't technically on the page, they're on the flap, but it's going to give us the same effect. this and we have this and then I think it's gonna go like that and then this opens like that and the next thing we're gonna see is this piece which I also have not scored and taped for some reason and what I'm thinking with this is we may need to trim the hair off yeah, I think we are because we need to have room for everything to close so I'm just gonna take a hair off one side so that's what I took off, um, just because we want to make sure we don't have too much bulk that we can't close that page. All right, so this one is scored along the top edge. You can get that little tearing tool at Scrap and Create. I really like it. Especially because you can see it. Which, as you all know, seeing is an issue for me. There we go. Okay, so this is gonna this. This is gonna go up here. Okay. And you wanna line this up to the outer edge. And that'll leave you that little gap here that's enough to um, allow for ease of movement. Okay. Line that that way. Around. Okay, so now that's going to go up. 
All right, so we have that, we have that, we have that, and that goes up. And I do think I'm gonna put this pocket here. Because of so much bulk going on, we're not gonna be able to put a lot in the pocket, but we'll have a little something. Okay. All right, so this, apparently I only scored and taped some of the pieces for this. You can see that now. Um, what happened is, if you were, if you've been around for a little bit, is I had Lucky Star and I had passages from Blue Fern to work with, and I didn't know what I wanted to start with, so I did a poll so you guys could decide. And for quite a while, it looked like passages was going to be first. So I designed an album, cut it, started getting it prepped, and then Lucky Star took over the poll. So I think I just never finished prepping these pages. All right, so I just scored the two short sides, one long side. Cutting out the corners. Let's cut that out below. Okay. Okay. Now, when you're doing pockets. You always want the side pieces in first and then the bottom because that gives you more volume and makes it easier to get things in and out of the pocket. This is going to go down here. And before I did all that burnishing, I really ought to have checked it for fit. Check yours for fit first. And actually, it fits, but given um, what I mentioned earlier about bulk in here, I think I am going to see if I can just bring it in a little bit on this one side. I'll have to re readhere that, but just I'm just giving a little tug and pulling it over a little bit. Maybe I will end up scoring it just to make it neater. Okay, so I'm just going to score it right about there. Okay, and I'm going to retrim my corner. What you could do when you're making yours is just cut that this pocket just a hair shorter than whatever the measurement says and then you won't have to worry about it. If I remember I'll make a note in the cutting guide. Oh my goodness I made a hash of that. Where am I at? Really messed up the lower corner of this pocket, and I'm trying to decide if I want to continue or cut a new one. I think I'm going to cut a new one. No point in continuing when I have plenty of the paper. All right, so I, and I'm going to do what I said just now, so I'll show you. 
the measurement is six and a half by three and a half, and I'm gonna cut it six and three eighths by three and a half. Let's try that again. to the side and I'm just gonna make a note so I can remember to put in the cutting guide for you to cut that a little short. definitely recommend if you don't already have one that you get yourself a notebook um, just keep it handy when you're watching videos and if you see an idea you like just jot it down that way you can work it into your own albums later or if you you know maybe you watch one of my videos and you don't particularly like something I did on one page you can go to your idea book and you know replace it with something that you saw somewhere else that I just discarded and that I'm replacing actually fit perfectly where it was going. The problem was, if you didn't catch it, is it would have been right up against here and there's just so much going on that I think it would have made it difficult for that page to, to look nice when it was closed. see I've got you know a fair bit there on the side but that's okay because that's gonna leave me plenty of room for all this so we're gonna line it up with this outside corner okay see what I'm doing my goodness there's a lot of stuff going on here Line it up nice and straight. Along the bottom there. I'm up a little bit, but that's okay. I don't mind that. I'd rather be up a little bit than sticking out the bottom. Okay, here we go. This one does not want to come off. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Then, 
there's that. Okay, so now we need to figure out the magnet situation. You don't have to use magnets. You could use, you know, ties or something, but I do want to use magnets. All right, so I'm gonna need a knife. This may take, just given how much stuff is happening here and I'm gonna have mats and things, I think it's gonna take several magnets to achieve what we want here. So I know I'm gonna need one here. I mean, normally on a flap this size, I'd use two, but I do kind of want to conserve magnets, so I think I'll just use the one. Right. I think I'm trying not to wreck my nails. I really like my manicure this week. Not that I don't always, but. I need at least three, maybe four. I'll put two there. Okay. All right. So we're gonna need one here. Let's start there. Sorry, I've got some stuck to my tape. There we go. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna put one there. Okay. And let's see. That one and that one. And then, I'm trying to decide. We're gonna open this, we're gonna open this. And then this is gonna come up, and this is gonna come up, and there's a pocket. I feel like that's a lot. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one here to match this one. So, let's see, I have a scrap of something, hang on. I just did a little cleanup so I don't have as many scraps lying around as I usually do, but of course I have some. Okay, this will work, okay. All right, so let's do that. This is the most complicated page. We're not going to have, um, I mean, we have other things going on on other pages that are interesting and have, a, have things going on, but not as many elements as this one has. Okay. All right, so what we did, just to remind, is we put a flap on the flap, a magnet on the right-hand flap and a matching one on the base of this flap, okay? So that's gonna, excuse me, that is gonna be that. Then what I'm gonna do is a magnet on this side of the flap and one on the base to hold the rest of the elements together. So this is gonna use a total of four. And I wanna make sure it's above the line of that pocket. don't want to have to fool with trying to get a magnet in the pocket. We also don't want to mess with whatever is in the pocket eventually. Okay. So let's put that there. Okay. Let me grab another 
little scrap. That's gonna be there. That's gonna be down. That's gonna go like that. So we're gonna have one, two, three. This is gonna lift up a little because it doesn't have its own magnet. And we could put one if we wanted to. We probably do have enough to do it. I think once it's matted though, it's probably gonna lay pretty flat. So I'm gonna leave it for now. We may decide to go back later on and add one. Okay, here we go. Page two, in contrast, is super easy. Huh, if I could lift it up. We just have a vertical belly band, okay? You're gonna take your belly band piece that's eight and a half by two. What do I do with my scoring tool? I don't know, I keep reaching for the scoring tool. I forget that my new, um, what is this thing? I just drew a blank. <laughs> My new bone folder is pretty sharp at the point and I can actually score with it. Saves me having to reach for an extra tool. I got this at Scrap and Create too and I love it. My old one was um, much heavier, thicker. I'm not heavy in terms of tool, but just bulkier. This one's got a little flex to it. I quite like that. Scored that half inch, top and bottom. And you do not need to trim the corners on belly bands. You know what? I think I just did I damage my paper a little bit here? I did. I don't know if you can see. See how that is sticking up? That's because I pulled my tape towards it. I should have pulled away. Um, but I can fix that. It's no big deal. And I will show you how in a moment. Just take a little bit of art glitter glue. My glue's clogged a little bit. So I just put a little glue where I tore that a little and I'm just going to fold it back where it belongs and that'll be that. It will be completely invisible in the end. Okay. And I am going to just turn this upside down. I'm just going to center this and I'm eyeballing the center. You can measure if you would like. Because I don't really care if it's slightly off, doesn't bother me. That's fine. Okay. Go. Oh, and it's definitely slightly off. Okay, that's okay. That's fine. Okay. Page two. Okay. Page three and four. So I'm going to go to a new base page. All right, these are page four. Set those aside. I'm going to go to a vellum pocket for page three. Okay. So three is an odd page, 
odd number of page. So we need to do the flaps the same as we did for page one. So let me go ahead and actually fold and burnish first. gel pen that I used got everywhere, but it's fine. It'll be covered by the mat. Okay. Before we put the vellum pocket in, we're going to add our magnet. You always want to be careful when you're putting these that you don't put them too close to the edge. It'll make it hard to put your mat down if you do. should put tape on the, on the magnets, which I didn't do on my other ones. I'll go back and do it later. Okay. I'm putting this tape vertical because things will be going in and out of this pocket and they'll slide easier over. I mean, it's going to be matted, but still. Okay, let's do this pocket. So this is one I'm not going to be able to fix if I make it too wide. Because vellum cannot really be rescored. So I want this, it's it's cut five and a half, but I really want it more like five and three eighths. I mean it's cut six and a half, excuse me. But I want it to end up a little narrower. So I'm gonna again I'm gonna trim about an eighth maybe a fat 16th off. Okay. All right. So now that should be fine. Okay. And as you can see, this piece is long. Uh, what I did is I just took um, and cut my six and a half off of the... Here, let me show you. Hang on. So, like, this was the whole sheet. And I just cut across and then I set this this piece aside to save for something else okay so in this case I don't need the full height I am going to tear it so I like that look with vellum and just to make life easier I'm going to tear a little now 
You can use a tearing ruler if you have one, and I do, but for this, I'm just doing it this way for now because it's temporary. I may re-tear it lower, but for now I just want to get it so that it fits. Okay, so we are going to score gently, gently, gently with vellum, okay, because you're going to go right through it in a heartbeat. So I am going to score half inch. And I'm doing so, like I said, extremely gently. Just go back and forth, gently, gently. Okay. Then we are going to turn it and we are going to score it again. I want to make sure I'm scoring it from the same side because you can see when you score it, it actually starts to curl up. I love the way vellum looks, but it is not a fun paper to work with. Okay. It's kind of close, but I think it'll be all right. I think I'll tape first. And it's okay to use tape because we are going to um, have a mat inside this pocket. So even if any of the adhesive shows, uh, it won't, it'll be covered. Check it. I probably should have done that before I taped it. I think that's higher than I want, so I'm going to rip it again. And since I taped it, I'm just going to cut through where I taped. side over and burnish okay. and then before I do the other side this is one of those things you just want to double triple check for fit before you proceed Once you've creased this and you know burnished it down, that's it. It's there forever. But and that's you know kind of a downside because you can't correct it. But it's also an upside because you get these beautiful crisp edges. And let's see. I think I am going to start in this corner here. So, just lift it 
stuff to make sure I've got it down where I want it. I do these a lot, these vellum pockets. I just, I really like them. I like how they look. I like being able to see what's in the pocket through it. I just like it. Ooh, you know what I do like and I didn't do though, is to ink the top. But fortunately we have a black background so, and we're gonna mat. So I think I can fix it. A little bit it'll be all right okay i don't want to even lifting it up because i can totally ink that background and it's not going to matter there we go okay ink yours before you put it down okay that that okay page three page four what are we doing on page four? Oh, we just got a couple of little flaps super easy all right, so we have two pieces, four and three quarters by three and one quarter. And we're gonna score these on their long edges at half inch. Okay, that one is gonna go there. Probably the last thing this book needed was more flaps, but that's what we're doing. Okay, and that's going to go there. Okay, go ahead and put tape. Checking the time. I have to work today, so I need to make sure I'm watching the clock a little bit. Everything right side up. Okay, that's right side up. Okay. I'm just drawing an arrow on my paper so I know what side is up. Okay, so I'm just going to put this one down at this end and the other one's going up there. Some reason this looks like a different size to me, but it's not. Okay. Okay, here we go. And try to decide do I want magnets or do I want to do a different type of closure on this? What 
what I'm thinking is something that'll magnetize to the base and just hold these down. Or even maybe some sort of mechanical closure. I'm not going to put a closure on these yet because I want to want to think about that. Okay, so that's three and four. Okay, page five. All right. All right, so again, page five is an odd, so we have to do the, the two big flaps. So let me do those. Oh. Fold and burnish first. So for this page, we are going to make a tiny little envelope that is going to be a flap. And it is going to sit right up here. Okay. So I think I'm just going to go ahead with the magnet here. And then we're going to hold off on this because it's going to need to be matted. So we'll do that all together when we get to that. So let me just put the magnet for this. And we'll come back to the envelope. Okay. Oh, 
I was doing there. Okay. I'm not going to need that because that's going to be there. Okay. That's page five. Page six is going to get a detachable element, so we don't need anything there. That's why I'm dithering on page four, because I know six is getting a detachable, so I don't know if I want to put a detachable on four. Okay. All right, page seven. Okay. All right. Seven is an odd and needs the two flaps again. So let's go ahead and do that. This book's going to have a lot of real estate for um, matting. Honestly, most of my books have a lot of real estate for matting because that's what I like. Okay, let us. Now, what we're going to do here, and I have to decide exactly how I want to go about it, is we're going to put a pocket that's going to sort of float in the middle of the page. It's not going to be attached like down at one side or anything. It's going to be in the middle of the page. But I want to put a window in the middle of the, page, the pocket. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do, because I've been debating it. And I was originally going to cut it with um, with my um, just a craft knife, but now I'm thinking I might use a die instead. And that's what I'm thinking. I'm trying to decide which die do I want to use. It'd be kind of fun to even to just use like a tag shaped die like the graphic 45 ones but let me just let me take a quick look at my dies and see what i might want to do hang on okay so i have this one that i like a lot i think i'm going to use it but if you don't have that one either like just a plain circle or something like that would work or if you don't have any dies then just use a craft knife and cut a rectangle or a punch and cut a big circle. And what I'm going to do, I cut this piece already, but I'm not going to use it because I think it'd be easier for me to um, cut it, you know, punch, ugh, run it through my die cut machine first, then cut it to size rather than attempt to get this thing centered on this piece. Although I guess I, I could try, I guess, and I could washi tape it down. So the thing is, I'm going to score this so that I can see exactly where it needs to be. I mean, I'm taking my life in my hands doing it this way, but we can always redo it if we have to. All right, so let's score the pocket. Just so I can get an idea exactly where this needs to be. Oh, that's not the line, that's the line. Okay. Make sure that was straight. 
feel like it wasn't. Okay. All right. So, and I'm, I'm okay with eyeballing if I have to. What do you think? I think that's actually pretty good. And it's it could even be like if you prefer it down some. I wouldn't put it up, but it could be down from center. That's not bad. Where's my washi tape? I think I just put it all away because I was using it. I have this little, it's actually a uh, bag to hold a bathing suit when you're on vacation, but I keep all my washi in it. As soon as I go to hold it down, let me see. How's that look? I think that looks pretty good. And again, if you do not have a die cut machine, use um, use a punch, use a craft knife carefully. Don't cut yourself. Um, I have a silhouette, but I definitely don't want to use that because I figure the odds of everybody having one of those are kind of slim, but I feel like is it a little bit, hang on, just checking if it's, I feel like it, I feel like it needs to go that way a little now that I've got tape on it, hang on, just measure before I, Three eighths. Yeah, it just needs to come over just a hair. That's good. Okay. But if you do have a cameo or a silhouette or something like that, then you could definitely use that to cut a piece. You just want to cut a shape out of the middle. Good. Okay. All right. I am going to cut that. I'll do that off camera so that. Let's see, that's part of Hang on. Anyway, I'm going to cut that and I'll be right back.
that. And I'm going to save this because maybe I'll use it on a tag or something. Okay. That. Okay. Now we have our pocket. And to this, we want to add a piece of vellum on the inside. Okay, like that. So I just need to cut this like five and a half. Okay. This is a scrap of vellum from left over from cutting that pocket that we did earlier on page three. put it down I'm going to tape and trim this oh you know what I'm thinking I probably should have matted this before I cut that window out too late now and if I were you I would mat this before I cut that window out it would just be easier but what I'm going to do is use the same die and cut um, an opening in the mat and then I'll cut around that to fit and go on. And I don't know what that mat's going to be or I would do it right now so you could see but um, if you want to just hang on and not do this yet until we get to that that's fine but that's how I'm going to do it. I'll cut a piece bigger than I need. I'll cut the, I'll use that same die, and cut out the, the same shape, and then I'll measure how far on each side I need and just trim it to fit. So honestly, that's probably the way to go anyway, rather than doing it first. Because if you do it first, I guess you could do it first. Either way, whichever way you want to do. And then I am not going to attach this to the page yet because we do need to put the the background mat down before we add this pocket. Okay, and now I'm going to add this. And I'm just checking it for width. I might need to cut a little off because we don't want to go past um, the tabs. So I do need to cut a little bit off. Measure, huh? We want it to be about four and a quarter wide, maybe a hair more. glue here in these corners assuming that my glue will work okay and then we're gonna go right around our cut Be pretty close. There we go. And then we're going to go around the edge of our vellum. Out from the 
center to make sure that it's flat. So that's going to be our other little vellum pocket and that is going to go here but we're not going to put it there yet because we need to mat the background before it can go in and then that and that so we need for this one i don't want to put a magnet all the way on the base because if i do there's so much bulk it'll be a problem so in this case, I'm going to put the second magnet here. So here and here. Okay. And I'm wondering if I should put the other one on the inside of this rather than the outside. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to go ahead and put it on the outside. They're so thin, it's not like it's going to show. there. Page 8 is a pocket and I don't see the pocket so I think I didn't actually cut it. Um, so let me cut that. I'll be back and we will do page 8. Okay, I am back to do page 8. It is actually three days later. I meant to come right back but went to, I went and had lunch, then I got distracted, then I had some stuff to do, but I'm back. As you can see from my mess of hands I have been painting. Oh, I hate painting. Okay, page eight. So last time we did seven, here's eight, and we're just going to do a diagonal pocket, okay? And it is going to go here, and to make this, what did I do with the other sheet? Here it is. Um, you're going to cut a piece six by eight, 
and just cut it in half diagonally. Save the other triangle. We'll use that later to make a template for our mats. Okay, so now you have a piece that looks like this. I'm going to score it down the long side at a half inch and across the bottom at a half inch. Trim out your corners, put your tape, very easy. started to do just regular uh, square stack pockets and we may do those on the inside cover but I just feel like we had a lot of straight lines going on here we needed something else although we do have that froofy window but okay and then just line this up along the bottom along the side mine appears to be not perfectly 90 degrees but I'm okay with that And I don't know if you can see, mine is in just a hair from along this side, just to reduce bulk down in the spine a little bit. Okay, that is page eight. Okay, page seven. All right. All right, so let's see. Make sure we have everything. It's page two. Three, so our little flaps. We still have to decide how we're going to close those little flaps. And I haven't made up my mind. Maybe just a seam binding to tie over them. I mean, we could use magnets. I have enough. I don't know. I'll get back to those. This is the envelope for page five that we'll make next time. Six um, is blank for now seven and the pocket we just did on eight okay so that is everything get yourself to this point and next time we will start matting we'll do that little envelope for page five um, and just see where we go from there all right thank you so much for watching don't forget you can get your um, paper to make this which is passages i'll show it to you uh, this is the eight by eight It's a beautiful collection. Turn it over. Um, you can get this at Scrap and Create, and I also have the ephemera for this and the journal cards. Um, and I guess that is it. So please like, share, subscribe. I will see you next time, and we'll keep going with this collection. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.